Ladies and gentlemen, thanks very much for joining us today. The MEC will be giving us a brief on the 2024 online admissions. As you know that we are about to start with the placement process. So those that are streaming online uh, from the media houses will give you an opportunity to also ask questions during Q&A. You can just send us the questions on our platforms. And the uh, MEC will then be taking questions from the floor after his presentation. MEC? Thank you. Good morning, uh, colleagues and uh, viewers at home. Uh, this is our update towards the placement, which uh, will start on the 4th. So we have received this year 757,075 applications, of which it's translated to 324,000 uh, grade 1 and uh, 432,219 grade 8 applications that we have received. But those are not unique applications. The unique applications are <coughs> 145,472 uh, completed applications for grade 1 and we had uh, 160,509. In total, in total, we there's a slight increase. Let me just get into the number. It's a slight increase from last year. Uh, it's just slight increase. So within these particular applications, those that have completed and they are viable to be placed in grade eight is in grade one rather is 129,554, and then in uh, grade uh, Grade 8 is 141,406. So in total it's 270,000 if you combine them. Those are applications that met the requirement, they've complied, the parents submitted all the necessary documents and the school has accepted them. Then we have the incomplete applica applicants which uh, amount to 7,484. These are parents who just sub submitted a name and submitted no documents. And there are those who have submitted partially, which is uh, 8,444. 8, and these are for grade one. They submitted all documents, but they were unable to provide a viable home address. So in total, we're looking at about 15,000 all in all, incomplete applications for grade one, and 19,000 all in all, incomplete applications for grade, for grade eight. So these applications will not be eligible to be placed in this current placement period. Uh, I'll explain later what, how we're going to deal with them. So, so far we're dealing with 270,950 applicants that we will be seeking to place, or we will be placing rather, from the 4th of September. So the completed applications, as I've said, they've complied with all the necessary documentation uh, they've provided uh, uh, proof of residence and legible and authentic, and we'll be placing them with, we'll place them according to a particular criteria, I'll get to it later on. Uh, and then the incomplete, as I've said, are those that were unable to provide full documentation that were required, especially the home address and many other, and other documents that were required. So those applicants, I repeat again to parents that they will not be eligible to be placed now. Uh, the incomplete applications, noting that a parent might assume that because they've, they managed to register their child, therefore for that is, is enough. Uh, we do have a process that we'll set up later for them, uh, which is something that I will put, I'll, I'll, I'll put into explanation. As I've said earlier, that from the 4th of September, we'll, we'll be re re releasing SMSs to parents uh, to, to offer them places and please, uh, they will have seven days to accept the space. So avoid the, parents must avoid the delay 
a game because I know sometimes they get these SMSs and then they delay to accept. Maybe perhaps they are, might not be comfortable with a certain school or uh, etc. So please, as you get an offer, take it because uh, that offer is is being considered properly. And I'll explain to you when I say this, those offers that we, have, we are going to be offering parents. We would have looked at a number of uh, criteria, as I've said earlier. So there will be SMSs going out from the fourth. And if you don't get an SMS, perhaps you've lost your phone or something within the system, go to the gdeadmissions.gov.za. as uh, the way, the same process that you did to apply, go there and check. Uh, so all parents will get an update on the 4th of September. That's what we're saying here. So placement offers will be placed according to a, a criteria. The criteria is five, there are five criteria that we utilize. Uh, the five criteria that we utilize. The first one is the home address within the school feeder zone. The feeder zone is a, it's not, it's an area that, it's a constituent area that fits into the school. Uh, it doesn't mean that because you live behind the school, therefore you are within the school feeder zone. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a constituent area that's been designated by the school uh, with together with the SGP that this is the area that the school fits. So that is the first criteria that we utilize to place the learner. The second one is a sibling and the previous schools because schools do feed into high schools. Uh, so those, school, those areas, we look into that. The siblings together with the, with the uh, previous school, the school feeder zones. Work address within the school feeder zone, we do take it as eligible. That is a third criteria. Uh, then we have a home address within 30 kilometer radius, and then a home address beyond 30 kilometer radius. Those are the last two. So the first one that we utilize predominantly is the home, is the home address within the school feeder zone and the siblings and the previous schools. That's what we utilize cr critically when we are placing learners. So what we've done this year, furthermore, this year we, 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 we then said, let's identify the high pressure schools so that parents can know that which are these schools that are, are popular and they generally get a large uh, uh, request. So we have identified 292 primary schools that are high pressure schools and 277 secondary schools that are high pressure schools. Uh, I will show you the, two, the top 20 schools. In primary school, the, the, we have Life School Acacia in Swania West, and Swania West is also one of our, our pressure areas. As the school has capacity of 246, and got applications of 1,476 applications. So we've listed the top 20 uh, high pressure schools within within this presentation, but there are 292, as I've said, uh, uh, as uh, primary schools that are high pressure schools. And in, in high schools, Katlewong Source School of Specialization, uh, which the good thing about this is it's a township school as well. It's got capacity of 275. It received 2,641 applicants. Uh, this is a change because it shows that uh, our township schools, uh, their performance is demonstrated through this particular process that parents are, are, are having confidence in our township schools and they, they want their learners to go there. So it received uh, 2,641. That is followed by World School, Lange Woven, in Swanee West. And these high pressure uh, schools, majority of them are in the areas that we know. It's uh, Gurulen South uh, Primary School, you find Gurulen North. At Swanee West and Swanee South as well. So there are our pressure areas will be seen by these schools. They, they actually even drive us to see where are these areas where we have a, a pressure. So Katlong Source is the most, uh, is the number one in this, in this uh, placement period of 2,641 for space of 275. And the list goes down. And there's quite a number, especially from Igurini South, uh, within this top 20 schools, high pressure schools in terms of applications. So 
the main question that parents are asking themselves, what next? Uh, the interventions that we have to ensure that we are able to create space and accommodation for these, uh, these learners. Uh, we, we have set up a plan, and this is what is in motion now. When I speak like this, we are currently there's something working, happening on the ground in terms of in increasing the capacity for schools to be placed, for learners to be placed rather. So we have got two programs that we are running strongly, uh, building new schools, uh, completing schools that we, they were incomplete. Uh, we have uh, a very successful program of self-build, which I'll speak to as well, and also mobiles. So what, these are construction work that we're currently taking place to ensure that we create enough capacity to, for us to be able to place our Remember, how the system is growing. Uh, this year alone, the system grew by over 24,000 learners. Uh, this is the growth that we have received. So if you translate 24,000 learners, and you say a, learner is 1, 000, a school is one learner, so it means the system grew by 20, 24 schools. So we needed 24 extra schools to what we have now. And as things are going with the growth of uh, the immigration into Gauteng province, we are anticipating that the system will grow to the size of free state in the next five years. That's what the research tells us. So the need and the agency of, of building this infrastructure to accommodate all this uh, growth in the system is what has been driving us. So it's, not, it's high on the agenda of the department that we need to increase and build capacity to ensure that we are able to deal with the in-migration into our province. Uh, with the growth, and the growth is rapid, especially with the rapid growth in urbanization across the world. There's movement from rural areas to, to urban centers. So Gauteng is one of those urban centers that's growing very rapidly. So, th so the approach, as I've said, is to conclude incomplete schools that we're currently building. These are schools such as Maibuye that will be opening, Beach Acres that will be opening. Uh, so completing also those that uh, uh, Rasteval. So there's quite a number of schools that we, that we already started building. We're going to complete them before the beginning of the academic year. Um, furthermore, uh, we're going to look into repurposing some classrooms because we know that some schools take classrooms and they say uh, it's, uh, it's for a particular special purpose. We're going to be looking into those classrooms because we need classroom space. So we'll be coming in to ensure that if a classroom can be utilized for this, we will be able to do that. So schools must understand that this year we're not going to be told that there's a classroom for this purpose or that purpose. We are, if we need space, you'll have to work. So an appeal is that let's work together with schools. Let's ensure that we create space. The system is growing. We have a constitutional obligation that we place our children into schools, and we we'll need to work together on that. So we will be looking to repurposing special classrooms to create space. Uh, for, 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 for to place our learners. So the self-built program, as I've spoken about it, that it's a successful program that we managed to build uh, 1,176 classrooms, uh, spaces for the from the past three years, at a cost of 587 million, and 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 that is about seven schools. Uh, literally, it's about seven schools if you translate it into schools. So it's a, it's a, no, that's a 39 schools rather, sorry, 39 schools. Uh, as opposed to if you build a new school, you with that money would have built seven schools because uh, the school costs about 80 million on average. So very successful program, we'll be continuing with it. Where we have requested a, a budget from Treasury which they are finalizing. We're looking to build about 2,300 extra additional classrooms through this self-built program, we will give schools a uh, budget so that they are able to, to build that additional classroom capacity. Obviously, we identify schools with spaces. Some schools don't have spaces, uh, literally. Uh, you can't really do much in terms of a, a space to, to, to build additional classroom capacity. Uh, but those that have spaces, so we're investing in that particular program, which is highly successful. So we'll be having 2,300 uh, classrooms being built through that program to increase our our capacity and if you translate that you're looking at you're looking at about 
additional capacity of about 80,000 spaces will be created through that particular program. Uh, and then we'll continue as well with our, with the delivery of mobiles. Uh, so with mobiles, we're looking to, we're looking to uh, uh, source over 2,600 mobiles to, to alleviate this pressure. So also with that as well, we're looking at about, run about the same figure in terms of classroom space, uh, 90,000 or so uh, spaces will be created through that program. So these are the interventions that we are putting in place to ensure that we are able to place all learners. Uh, because remember, as much as we've got the 270,000 that have complete application that we placed, there's another 35,000 that I've not spoken to that incomplete applications, which they will have a process later on after we place the 270, we will be communicating with those parents, uh, those 35,000 parents too, with space offers. And obviously we'll say bring, they need to comply in terms of application. You can't place a child if there's incomplete application. But we'll be offering them spaces together with, uh, no, they'll, yeah, we'll, together with the, the form, they need to come and complete the applications rather. And then we'll be offering spaces where space is available. Um, uh, they've lost the, the privilege of, uh, of choosing a school because the applications are incomplete. And later on as well, from the 11th of December, we'll open for late applications as well. So we know that there will be that particular demand because we do have. So we are anticipating that uh, a, 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 a demand there. So, so that's what we're doing. Further, we've got satellite schools that will, that will be that we will be also be looking into establishing across, especially in high pressure areas, we'll be identifying vacant lands and working with the uh, immediate schools nearby so that we can set up these uh, satellite schools across the province where there's a need. Already we do have a few of them, uh, so we've seen that model works. So we'll continue with it so that we, we, we're able to place this uh, excess pressure that we, we have, especially in our high pressure areas. So the new and uh, replacement schools that are under construction, as I've spoken about, Brown Fisher, Inkulere Sizwe, Simunye, Simpato, everybody like all these schools are schools that are currently under construction we are pushing to complete them by, by, uh, by the beginning of the academic year. So, so we, 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 we want this, uh, the, the contractors, I said to them that they need to work, if possible, 24 hours a day so that they are able to meet uh, the deadline. So these are the schools that we, we are targeting to, for them to, to be ready for the academic year to assist us to alleviate the pressure and create that particular uh, school's uh, classroom capacity that we, we need daily. So with unplaced applicants, firstly, I said that you will be, yes, the unplaced, these are the ones that I said they've got incomplete applications. I repeat again that they, were, they are not eligible now. A parent can assume that because they submitted the child's name, they're eligible. No, they're not eligible because they didn't complete. So they'll have to wait for, when, for the process when we're done with these ones. Then we'll, get, we'll communicate with them via SMS. Uh, and also parents are asked to go from time to time, go to the GDE admissions to check for an update from time to time. From there, they will see an update so that, that, and that update will say, will open up for them, uh, the incomplete applicants, and the schools that will be available, the system will show what is available. They will only be able to apply for those particular schools. And still, they'll have to comply with the documentation that is needed. That's, that's, that's important that parents must know that they have to all the time comply. And those that have complied, uh, they might not be happy with some of the school place. The offers, they have a right to appeal. So the 270,000 are the ones that have a right to appeal. They, will, they, will, they can appeal within seven days, uh, and it's online. And they must remember that the decision from the appeal, once it's signed off by the MEC, which is myself, it's final. Uh, it's final. So we're very objective. They don't, parents must not assume that because there was an offer, therefore I will not take, if the appeal is there and I can see that the process could be handled differently, there's, there's evidence, a lot of evidence of many a times 
We have insisted that schools must take their learners. So parents be, must be assured that the appeal process is quite credible and it's a process they can undertake if they're not happy with the offers that they would have received uh, from, from, from this process. So those is for those that have, uh, uh, for those parents that are the 270,000 parents. But the rest, late applications and incomplete applications have no right to appeal. The space that you are offered is a space that is there. So parents can decide to take it or not, but we urge parents to take it. Uh, because our role, as I've said earlier, that is to comply constitutionally, and the Constitution says is to ensure that a child is in school. So we comply constitutionally to ensure that we offer every child space. So parents can do that. <coughs> so those, are, those appeals obviously will be processed within 14 to 21 days of the of receipt of it. So it's going to be a very speedy process uh, that we'll be dealing with appeals. Uh, but I would urge parents that please work with us. It, it's not an easy uh, process that we undertake, as you are all aware. Uh, we all want schools that we want. Uh, but sometimes, as I've outlined, I've showed you the high-pressure schools that, that 277, especially secondary schools, I'll focus there because that's where there's a lot of uh, pressure in terms of applications. Uh, parents work with us in that space that we know that perhaps we wanted certain schools and those schools are full uh, but where would we be taking your learner if we don't place them at a school that you have preferred it's a school that is immediate to that school that you uh, uh, preferred it's not a school we're not going to take your child if we have applied in uh, whole school menlo then we take your child and place them in in winterfeld we're not going to do that we're not irrational you know, we look for immediate schools that are within the area because we know that a parent's decision to apply for a child in a particular area is informed by also the socioeconomic status that are they working there or are they living there. So there are, there are many factors. So we are considerate of those particular factors. So when we place your child, we will be placing a child next to as, or immediately close to where you would have preferred and trust the capacity of our schools to perform. Our province is a high-performing province in terms of, uh, as you know, with uh, the metric, metric results were always above 80, 84 percent. So it's a high-performing province. It's not a province where the results are a bit low. So you can trust our schools. And even our township schools, the most, the most in-demand school in Gauteng currently is a school in Katleho, in demand. So it shows you that even these township schools that parents maybe initially did, a view about but now they are and in fact most parents are moving their kids they might stay in a suburban area but they go and apply a child in a township because the performance of these township schools and the quality that they get from the school so across our province our schools are, are of uh, of high quality in terms of performance uh, we're working very hard to ensure that we bring all our schools at the same level uh, and so far because of the narrowing and that shows even in the narrowing of the gap between the performance of former what you call model C school and the township school which has narrowed to about seven percent or nine percent this year so it's literally not there in terms of if we differentiate in terms of quality of passes so there's passes there so with that said uh, just to quick recap for for all parents from the 4th of september sms's will be released if you don't get an sms Go to the GD admissions uh, page and you'll find some form of communication that will be there. All parents will be communicated on that day. They'll receive some form of communication in terms of placement offers. Uh, and this process will continue until we're done, until the end of the year. Uh, we'll ensure that we place them uh, quickly, as quickly as possible. But because of uh, how we are improving every year with this system, we, we will be able to do this process much quicker than we did last year so that we can begin to deal with those incomplete applications and also begin to deal with the late applications. Uh, so we'll be moving very quick. It's a, it's a process that we're working very, very strong with our, our team from uh, POS, uh, our districts and, and our schools. Uh, every day we're working together to ensure that we find and create space for all these, these learners that have come forward the, the, for us to place the 270,000. So if you need further assistance, parents can go to districts. They can visit our district offices. 
Uh, we've got 15 district offices. They can go there any time to ensure that they, they are able to get help if they need further details and assistance on, on acceptance and placement of offers. And furthermore, applicants who do not accept placement offers, I have to highlight it, within seven school days will be auto-placed at a school that we made an offer. So we will place, so you'll have seven days to apply your mind. If you don't make a decision in seven days, we place the child because we really have to create space. Because sometimes you can, a child is, can, you can get offers from four schools that you've applied for, and then you delay. So the delay means the system recognizes this four as being occupied. So to open up, we're going to take decisions. Seven days, the parents doesn't make a decision, we, we place the child. Then we, we fill up spaces so that we can continue with this process of placing learners. So seven days, parents will have seven days from the 4th of September until uh, uh, that seven days pass, lapse, to accept or reject the, uh, the placement offer. So, uh, and, and, and it's important to repeat again that prioritization will be for the complete applications, more importantly, those with verifiable home address. The feeder zone will be prioritized, so when we place the first criteria is the school feeders on the home address. And then from there, as I've said, the criteria, the sibling and the, and the school uh, feeder zone. So those are the two that are very critical as when we make decisions on placing, on placing learners. And then if that doesn't, we'll also look into place learners to schools where spaces are available nearby, closest to the feeder zone. So as I've showed you, the high pressure air schools 270 spaces for Katleong source, 2,600 applicants. So obviously there's no space for over 2,400 learners there. So we we'll need to work with parents, need to work with us that there will be 2,400 parents who will not get spaces in Katleong source. Uh, and we will place their, those learners in schools nearby, uh, the, the school, the area. So parents work with us that we will be making you offers from schools nearby to those that you've applied for and those that are nearby to your home address and those are nearby to the previous school feeder zone. Uh, we'll be looking into place. So work with us in that process. Take the spaces, the offers that we are making. Every school in our province provides good education. And we are working around the clock to ensure that we even get those schools that parents are in doubt of into the level that Gauteng is known for to be a high-performing province. And we have many research data that tells us that Gauteng is providing quality education. Even the research across the world, we are providing good everywhere. So they need to trust us there. So with that said, uh, the contact details are there. I'm sure you can see them. Uh, you, can, you have the toll-free number, WhatsApp, uh, hotline at email the website you can also reach us on our social media pages if it needs be we do respond we have responded to a couple of parents who have come on our social media pages for for queries and intervention so with that said thank you very much uh, I wish all the parents all the best and please take what you are offering your child how they are offering good education across thank you very much Thanks very much, uh, MEC. We'll now take questions from the media. And those that are streaming from our platforms, you can send us the questions if you have uh, on, on the groups so that we can then take them. Um, I, will, I will indicate and then you will introduce yourself and the media house that you work for. Uh, I will start. You are number one, number two, number three. Um, okay, we'll come back. Maybe this brainwave. Thank you. Um,
process. Uh, in, in particular in this area, what have you done to alleviate the pressure? If you're building uh, a new school or you're building schools, how many will you build, be building in this a particular area? Um, for the incomplete applications, um, will, will these ap incomplete applications be open concurrently with the late applications or will they be open before then? Uh, thank you. Hello, um, it's Mariska Kutzer from The Citizen. I just want to find out about the high pressure schools. Um, as my colleague also asked, is there maybe um, plans to, you know, just give us a better understanding and also a list so that we can inform, you know, the, the readers of the schools they should be aware of that might become a problem? Thank you. My name is Bafedile Moirani from ENCA. My question is in relation, MEC, to the incident at Zagane Secondary School. Um, do you have any uh, plans outside the South African Depression and Anxiety Group in assisting the school? And I understand that the parents today are expecting you at the school. Do you have any plans to go there? Okay, then. okay, thank you so much. Um, <coughs> yes, uh, China, China West is, is uh, but the only areas that are there, it's Acacia and Acacia Secondary. We've, got, we've set up satellite schools there uh, currently. We've dispatched uh, uh, mobiles. There are going to be mobile schools just to alleviate that area. So that's where it is, it's in Acacia. Uh, yeah, in mostly, so we have set up satellite schools there, but we also like we're also looking to um, expand through this program that I've spoken to about uh, self-built and also mobiles in the immediate schools in the area. So this is what we are doing, and remember the pressure there is obviously we know where it is. Uh, so we managed to place the number this year, so we know that at least next year we'll be able to. Uh, place them. So I don't anticipate much of a problem uh, next year uh, with regard to at the beginning of the year in that area. So we are comfortable. So with the list, we will communicate the list. I said uh, within the presentation, I just listed 20, but we've got 292 primary schools across the province and we've got 277 secondary schools. So we'll share the list with yourselves and it will be good that you, you publicize that list so that parents can be aware which are the schools that are high pressure schools within our province. That will be very helpful. Thank you very much. You know, we appreciate that particular one. And, and so with Takane, uh, we have a program in place uh, uh, with, re with regard to dealing with the psychosocial. Uh, I need to say that uh, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's, it's across. We do have n quite a number of, learners are going through quite a lot of late uh, through, throughout, you know, Pressures from school for performance, pressures from parents, pressures from social media, pressure. So it's a lot. We know that this, our kids are going through a lot uh, to ensure that they are able to handle all this. So we've, we've currently embarking on a process. We will be having a summit. Maybe I must start there. We'll be having a summit to deal just specifically with s mental health in school to focus on it and the type of support and intervention that we'll be putting in our schools. We do have uh, our psychosocial unit with, that works with a couple of NGOs, uh, such as the Teddy Bear, Teddy Bear, is it Teddy Bear Foundation, mm -hmm. uh, the Teddy Bear Foundation, and all other ones that you were speaking about, uh, uh, depression, all, all these NGOs that are coming across into our schools, we've partnered with them, we've got so, uh, social workers. Uh, so we've put in place all these intervention areas. It's, it's all about getting learners to access We've also got a, t a number, a toll-free number, uh, is it 116, which learners is still working. Learners can call if they need support uh, of any form with regard to dealing with uh, mental health problems. So we do have all that is in place. It's all about uh, learners accessing it and also communicating. I know that maybe to a large extent, some learners don't know of this particular information that there is a number that you can call 
Then you'll have a, 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 a professional on the other side helping. And why it is good about learners calling? The minute they call, the log, we know who the learner is. We, we, we quickly move in. The district and all the senior officials who are in the psychosocial, they quickly go and identify that learner so that we can and help and support that particular learner. So we do have all that in place. It's all about communicating that out there that there is this number that is, it's our, it's our call center, uh, SGDE, uh, it's 116. We're also revamping it uh, through our WhatsApp, we're revamping the WhatsApp, we're revamping the whole system so that it communicates much better and efficient. So all of that is in place. Mm. Uh, I just said that let's, let's, let's ensure that we amplify in terms of communication that it's known that there is help when you need help. So learners out there and parents as well, they can, they can uh, access that particular uh, airplane so that we support both. Because sometimes also parents contribute to, to, to the learner. So we, we have that particular, and we've got social workers. Uh, we've got a partnership with the Department of Social Development. It has given us 100, is it 130? Yeah, 130 or so social workers that are at district level to assist and go to those particular learners who need this particular support. So we do have a comprehensive plan in place and we do have comprehensive system in place. It's all about learners accessing it. Uh, today, the, the parents are not, they're holding a parents meeting. Uh, it's not necessarily a meeting with the MEC. Uh, uh, that's, what, that's the information that I have. Thank you very much. Uh, if I've missed anything, it should be. Thanks very much. Uh, I think um, I didn't receive anything online. That will mean that is the follow up. Okay. Um, oh yeah. I just want to find out, um, I hope I pronounce this right, the Maya Bouye um, Primary School there in Midrand. I went there this week just to see, you know, what's going on there. Is there any plans to work on these schools that were built? I mean, there's a perfect, I don't want to say it's a perfectly good school because obviously it's falling apart. But I mean, there's space, there's means, and I understand tender processes and we all know it, but is there plans to do that next year, you know, those type of unfinished, abandoned schools. And do you guys think that that would maybe help alleviate this problem of where um, folk had what's it when the schools are too full and so on? So, yeah, is there a plan for those unfinished schools? Yeah. No, I spoke about it within my presentation. Maybe I highlighted it. My boy. Page Acres and all these other schools, Bram Fisher and LG Olele, there's a number of schools that were in construction and they were not completed. We are going to complete. My Buya will be open in the next academic year. I can assure you that much. I'm sure since you've gone there, you saw that they've already cleared up the grasses uh, outside. Uh, that's a start. We're, clean, we're clearing up. Uh, if there are snakes, we're ensuring that we remove them. You know, when there's grass, anything can be there. Mm -hmm. So we've cleared up the grass. Uh, the contractor will be on site this week uh, to start. Uh, remember, my point in terms of structure is there. We have a structure. Mm -hmm. We're just going to fix the electrical cabling, just lights and all those things. So we've got a contractor that will be there this week to begin work. So to ensure that by the next academic year, my boy is one of those schools that we're going to be open. That also goes to schools that we've opened partially such as Bram Fisher, we've opened partially, so we're completing them. Bram Fisher, I know it's sitting at about 90% completion, so it's, 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 it's about 10%. So we know Batch Acres, which is a ACT, we're also going to open it up, we're going to conclude it, will be done by the, at the beginning of the academic year. We need spaces, so we are not going to play with infrastructure that we have. We're going to ensure that we get it right into proper uh, quality for our learners. So all those those things, we're aware of them and we're going to do. But more importantly, like I said, the self-built, the 2,300 schools, uh, classrooms, no, sorry, 2,300 class, class, classrooms is our target because which this, is, they're even better <coughs> because of their, 
there is brick and mortar. So we want brick and mortar, as opposed to mobiles. But we're also procuring mobiles. We're looking to procure almost about 2,600, because mobiles are quicker. Uh, because when you build, it takes you, we, we're looking at that. So mobiles also. So it's a simultaneous process. We are repurposing classrooms to ensure that we create space. So we're doing all, we've got all these things, plans in place. We're executing them, rather. It's not a long plan. It's, a, it's something that is in action now. We're executing it so that we're able to create spaces for our learners. We don't want the problems of this year. I told them that this year, next year, I want to go and open a school and smile. I don't want parents to be at the district, in the head office, or in my office, or being stopped in malls and be told that my child is not placed. We don't, I don't want that. We want to ensure that by, from the day one, 8 o'clock or 7.30, learners are sitting on a chair, they have a desk, there's an educator in front of them, all of them, at the beginning of the academic year, and that's our goal. So we'll ensure that we get to that point. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of our, oh, okay, the last one. Molly Mamutwa from SABC TV News. Uh, talking about classroom shortages, let me see. We did see the department uh, early this, earlier this year uh, enhancing space by providing some uh, schools with mobile units in Pretoria. Um, was that enough? And now talking about um, uh, you know, provision of those for schools, which areas? Uh, have you identified which areas are going to need more of those? Yeah, we, we, we know these areas. This is the, the beauty about this process, uh, this online admission. The beauty about it, it allows us to plan. Actually, this, at the center of us coming up with this idea was to be able to plan. Uh, uh, it's not about parents not going to lines anymore, which is also about them in a way, but largely is to prepare the department that this is where you're going to need to increase capacity, this is where you're going to need to improve infrastructure. So we know, so this system helps us to do that. So we know where the areas are, uh, including south, especially those, high, for example, those top 20 uh, high pressure schools from primary and secondary schools, we know them it's on the west, that area, uh, but next year I don't anticipate much of a problem because we, we, had, we have set up satellite schools as well as also increase uh, capacity through provision of mobiles and self-build. So we, we, I don't expect much of, a, of uh, the situation that we experienced uh, this year in, those, in some of the areas, but we know where there will be a problem in the south, uh, we know that we accept, we're expecting it uh, is the Jobek East, East, yeah. Jobek East, um, the Rodiport, Rodiport area. No, Jobek East is, um, Ivory, Park. Ivory Park, yes. Jobek East is Ivory Park, and then Jobek West. Jobek West is the Rodiport. is the Rodiport area. Yes, sorry. Jobek West, Rodiport, Ivory Park, Jobek East. We we know. Uh, and we know what is happening there now. I'll be going there to the community to speak to them. Also, it's also about infrastructure. They, they're expecting some, there's a school there. We know that the situation, we are dealing with it. But we need parents and the community to work with us. This thing of when there's a problem in a school and, and parents decide to close a school, I don't know what is the end objective when you close a child from getting education. Honestly, that for me, it's uh, what is this thing of biting your nose to spite your face? Mm -hmm. That's exactly what you're doing. When you close a school and say kids can't go and get education, and then tomorrow you expect that child to be a doctor and to be, forget about your behavior of disrupting schooling in between. Work with us. We know that there are areas where we have problems. Elevate them for us for intervention. We are a responsive government, especially the head office. Parents know that every time where they'll be able to speak to the HOD or speak to me as the MEC, 
they have been able to get a response and a satisfactory response as well. So we do respond. There is no need to go and close a school because you are unhappy about this or that. Don't close the school. Allow us to enter and fix the issue. If the school issue is the principal, allow us to, through the necessary legislations, to act to ensure, but don't disrupt the school. Uh, parents or community members disrupted Zodwa. Zodwa is a special school. I mean, those kids, if we close the school and say kids can't go there, some kids receive meals in those schools. And you, clo you close them and you close them and medication and everything in those schools. You close those kids and say they can't enter. And you say you're solving a problem. You're not solving a problem. You're destroying a life. What if a kid needed that medication on that day that is provided by that school? And the kid passes on or has complications. And you know. So I really feel that parents need to work with us. Don't close the school. Let's, if there's issues, let's take uh, the issues somewhere else. Or let's have a constructive engagement, parents meeting, community meetings. But schools are responsibility of the community to protect. Let's protect our schools, not close them down, not uh, vandalize them, uh, and all these things that uh, people tend to do to our schools. Uh, so I'm appeal it's an appeal to the community. It's my appeal to work with us. Uh, we are doing our best to ensure that we provide the best education that can be provided by our government and system uh, within the province. So don't close schools. Talk to us. Call a meeting. We are there. We'll come and solve it. That's my appeal. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, MEC. Uh, Director uh, Matonsela, uh, the champion of the system, Acting HOD, Tate Mutlana, thanks for joining us. Ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the, oh, the brain wave. Yeah, no, uh, no, Acacia Primary, I spoke about the satellite schools, so they will resolve that particular problem. But we're also anticipating the, the, the Bella Bill to assist. Uh, the sooner they pass it in Parliament, the better, so that we can also be able to increase uh, the mediums in schools. So the legislation will be passed and hopefully will allow us, because we really need to, to single medium schools, uh, they, we don't have a problem. All right, but we need to open up because part of uh, our our constitution requires us to, you know, engage culturally, you know, uh, bring in other aspects so that we develop a nation. We want to build a nation, so they need to play together to live together. So we we are looking at that as well, but uh, we we do have a plan uh, around that. So I have spoken to Acacia Primary, will assist. Okay. Give you one and one. Uh, if you want to take it further. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of the media briefing. Thanks very much.